this concept of ecosystem-based adaptation to take root anywhere, this is the place to begin. The designation of the area as an MPA is expected to serve two primary purposes. Firstly, it will protect the coastal and marine ecosystems from further degradation due to destructive practices, for example, fishing, waste disposal, sand mining, etc. Secondly, the designation of the area as an MPA would allow for the development of a zoning regime to manage the multitude of users of the area to minimize existing and future users and conflicts. Going back to the building, I'm very happy that at least the funding has been uh, realized so that that could happen. It would be a very good addition to the tongue of Wharf. With the procurement guidelines that the German KFW, that's where the money comes from to reach CBF and to reach EBA and eventually to reach Grenada, all right? And they are very strong on process. No slapdash kind of thing, right? Very, very strong. We are trying to identify pollution hotspots in the river system, in the true river system. So we are tasked with the challenge, if you want to call it that, or the task of identifying nutrients in the river. Uh, also bacteria, to be precise, the E. coli bacteria. We are here today to celebrate what you see, the success of partnership, working together. And, and I really appreciate, you know, what we have achieved and where we are today. What does this building mean for the cooperative? We see that as, we want to call it, a landmark. A landmark for the Gwarf Fishermen Cooperative Society Limited. A landmark for fishers all the fishes, a landmark for St. John's, for Grenada. This building is what you, we will determine the fishermen headquarters. What we did today is a roving dive where we did one, placed a stake as permanent markers for the sites which we surveyed uh, previously. So we place permanent markers so we can return to the sites in future to conduct the same assessments so we can get change over time. We also did an extensive fish uh, survey which will capture fish over a wider area outside of what we did in the quantitative benthic surveys. This project seeks to remove all hazardous underwater and terrestrial marine debris uh, the relic vessels or any sort of solid waste that would cause an obstruction to the normal fishing and boating and activities of people that reside in this area. So far from this project, what I would like to say is a big takeaway is how much uh, we're generally not aware of a lot of the destruction that we cause when we can't see. Because a lot of this garbage and marine debris and those other hazardous solid waste materials, they are generally out of sight. So people don't see them. But nonetheless, they end up in the marine environment 
and they do have an impact on a lot of the operations that happen within the water, which also affects how, how people actually benefit from, from, this, from this area in general, from the, from the livelihoods in particular. This area is also one of the, one of the better recreational areas around the St. John's area as it is one of the one of the bigger sandy beaches that people have access to. My advice to people would be to try to be more mindful, try to be more conscious when you have to dispose of solid waste. Uh, do it in a manner that you know that is sustainable and that is environmentally friendly. Because when we create uh, such catastrophes basically, because this is what we're seeing here, we leave them behind and we leave them behind for future generations. And though we may not think of it as much, it does have an impact. And this is the example that we generally set in for generations to come.